Start. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Last night was a good time. Yes, it was. Yes. yes. Uh, it was great. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Does anyone else still feel like they're kind of asleep? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was quick. Yeah. I am thankful. I am thankful that uh, next year, Shabbat, or at least Pesach falls on Wednesday, so yeah. we won't have to worry about this. Um, of course, that opens up different problems, but um, it's not right before Pesach, or right before Shabbat. All right. Well, let's go ahead and just start with Shabbat Shalom, because let's have some fun with this. Shabbat Shalom. It's hard to beat it. It's a classic. Father, thank you so much for your Shabbat day. Thank you so much for Pesach that was last night. Lord, thank you that we just get to talk about your word. Thank you that we get to live through these biblical holidays, Lord. Lord, I'm just praying a blessing over every single person who is here, Lord. Lord, we are here to learn more about you and to study your word together, Lord. Lord, I'm just praying that you reveal yourself in a special way to everyone who is here last night, Lord. Lord, that you continue to draw us closer to you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your presence here today. I think this Shabbat, Lord, this peaceful Shabbat we get down together. Amen. Amen. Let's go to page 98 in Kamoka. <laughs> page 98 in Kamoka. In Kamoka, Malima There is none like you, Adonai, and there is nothing like your deeds. God, you rule eternally. Your kingdom lasts for all generations. Adonai rules, Adonai ruled, Adonai will rule forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to God's people, Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Merciful Father, favor Zion with your goodness. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for we trust only you, ruler, God on high, sovereign of worlds. Let's go ahead and open up the Aaron Kodesh. Whenever the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, Adonai, to scatter your enemies. May those that hate you flee from you. For Korah shall come from Zion, the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in holiness gave the Torah to Israel. 
page 101. Praise be the name of the sovereign of the universe. Praise be your crown and your place. May your love for your people Israel last forever, and may the salvation of your right hand be revealed to your people in your holy house. Grant us the goodness of your life, life, and accept our prayer with mercy. May it be your will that we be granted a long, good life. And may I be counted among the righteous, so that you will have mercy on me and protect me in all that is mine and all that belongs to your people Israel. For you are the one who nourishes all and sustains all. You rule over all. You are the one who rules over earthly rulers, and sovereignty is yours. I am a servant of the Blessed Holy One. I bow before God and before the honor of God's glory at all times, not in any human do I trust, nor to rely on any angel, but in the God of heaven, who is the true God, whose story is true, and whose prophets are true, who multiplies deeds of goodness and truth. In God do I trust, and in God's holy and honored name I seek praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to Torah and completely answer my heart's desires and those of your people Israel for good, for life, and for peace. Amen. greatness with me. Let us praise God together. Romu, Adonai Eloheinu, Vishakavu, Vishakavu, Laharam Raglav Kadoshu. Romu, Romu, Adonai Eloheinu, Vishakavu, Vishakavu, Lahar Kadoshu. Kikados, 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 Adonai Eloheinu. be seated. I'll say this right now. I like that we have a service that can be scaled down or scaled up easily. Some days you can have six, eight people up here, and other days you can have one, and it works. Um, but I always think it works better with, with help. So I'm very thankful for Nick, who is here just about every single week. Um, very, very rare exception. Um, so what I think we'll do today is we're deviating from our normal Torah reading uh, pattern. Today's Torah reading comes out of Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. What we're going to do is I'm going to read just the first verse or so in Hebrew, and then instead of a teaching time, let's just go ahead and read the entire parasha for this morning. It's super short. Um, and those of you who've been listening to the teachings, this is like their third time hearing me read it this week. Um, I see Tammy smirking and I, I wonder. Um, you've probably heard me read this too many times. But, um, what's that? I love scripture. I do too. And I just can't get around how important it is. Page 104. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamburah Baruch 
Usually, for those of you, especially joining us online, maybe this is your first time seeing us, I sing about the first three to five verses usually. Today, I just, this week, I just didn't have the, 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 my normal amount of time. Can anyone guess why I didn't have my normal amount of time? I was preparing for something else um, for Pesach last night. So let's go to tw uh, chapter 12, verse 21. I am using the stern translation of the scriptures. Then Moshe called the leaders of Israel and said, Select and take lambs for your families and slaughter the Pesach lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop leaves and dip it in the blood, which is in the basin, and smear it on the two sides and top of the door frame. Then none of you is to go out the door of his house until morning. For Adonai will pass through to kill the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top and the two sides, Adonai will pass over the door and will not allow the slaughterer to enter your houses and kill you. You are to observe this as a law you and your descendants forever. When you come to the land which Adonai will give you, as he promised, you are to observe this ceremony. When your children ask you, what do you mean by this ceremony? Say, it is the sacrifice of Adonai's Pesach, because Adonai passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt, when he killed the Egyptians but spared our houses. The people of Israel bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the people of Israel went and did as Adonai had ordered Moshe and Aaron. That is what they did. At midnight, Adonai killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh sitting on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock, Pharaoh got up in the night, he and all his servants and all of his, the Egyptians, and there was horrendous wailing in Egypt, for there wasn't a single house without someone dead in it. He summoned Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Up and leave my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go, serve Adonai as you said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said, and get out of here. But bless me too. The Egyptians uh, pressed to send people out of the land quickly because they said, Otherwise, we'll all be dead. The people took their dough before it had become leavened and wrapped their kneading bowls in their clothes on their shoulders. The people of Israel had done what Moshe had said. They had asked the Egyptians to give them silver and gold jewelry and clothing. And Adonai uh, had made the Egyptians so favorably disposed toward the people. That they had let them have whatever they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. The people of Israel traveled from Ramses to Sukkot, some 600,000 men on foot, not counting children. A mixed crowd also went up with them, as well as livestock in large numbers, both flocks and herds. They baked matzah loaves from the dough that they had brought out of Egypt, since it was unleavened, because they had been driven out of Egypt without time to prepare supplies for themselves. The time of the, um, I'm sorry, the time the people of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years to the day, all the divisions of Adonai left the land of Egypt. This was at night when Adonai kept vigil to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And the same night continues to be a night when Adonai keeps vigil for all the people of Israel through their generations. Adonai said to Moshe and Aaron, This is the regulation for the Pesach land. No foreigner is to eat it. But if someone has a slave he bought for money, when you have circumcised him, he may eat it. Neither a traveler nor a hired servant may eat it. It is to be eaten in one house. You may not take any of the meat outside the house, and you are not to break any of its bones. The whole community of Israel is to keep it. If a foreigner staying with you wants to observe a nice Pesach, all of his males must be circumcised. Then he may take part in observing. He will be like a citizen of the land. But no uncircumcised person is to eat it. The same teaching is to apply equally to the citizens and to the foreigner living among you. All the people of Israel did just as Adonai had ordered Moshe and Aaron. On that very day, Adonai brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their divisions. We'll talk more about this scripture portion later on. 
of course, but that is our reading for this week. Is anyone here um, recovering from a serious illness or returned safely from a long journey or survived any kind of danger, including childhood? Emmy. Go ahead and read that first blessing in Hebrew or in English, and we'll read the response for you. Okay, great, sorry. Is Go ahead. Which one? Page 106. The top oh, one. Doing it, like? Yes. Mm-hmm. Or seven. Okay. Uh, praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who acts kindly towards the undeserving and has built kindly in you. May the one who's bestowed this upon you continue to grant you every command of goodness. It's good to have you both here today. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is how we're going to do today's. Um, prayers for the healing of the sick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list off three people in our congregation who very much need healing. Among them are um, Yantan Ben Abraham, Juanita, and I'm forgetting the third one. Um, Say it again. I feel like I counted three right before service. I should have had it written down. So we'll say Maria as well. I'm going to name the three. Um, And then if you want to pray for anyone or any uh, family member say or you name it, I will leave, I will give you time to say their names publicly and loudly. May the Holy Blessed One, who bless our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal Juanita and Yonatan ben Abraham. May the Holy One give them support. I'm sorry. Caleb Allen, Kenny Allen, Allen. 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 Ashley Lambert, and Hannah Kendrick. And of course, Maria. May the Holy One give him support, courage, determination, and patience of spirit. Grant them physical and spiritual wholeness. May God be kind of strengthened and heal them speedily, body and soul, together with others who are ill. I want to say, Amen. Amen. Oh God, God heal, heal them speedily. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I forgot to prepare a healing passage today. Um, we'll just get that for today. Uh, here. Page 110. Hear their voice of God when they call, be gracious to them and answer them. In your name is the soul of all living things. Grant them patience, faith, and courage, never let despair overwhelm them. Be with them in difficult times, and help them to face and exercise the confidence and hope. Grant them your healing power so that in vigor of body and mind they may return to their loved ones for a life of blessing and sustenance. Restore them, God, O God, and give them strength. Praise our you, God, and Amen. How many of us believe that He is really a healer of the sick? I've seen it. Uh, I've seen people cured of cancers that were certain to kill them. And I've also seen people not be healed. Mm-hmm. I like how um, uh, Wigglesworth put it. He said, the day that you understand supernatural healing is the day that you understand God. In other words, you can't. Page 112, the Chatzik Hadish. Yigna Vikadash Rava. Amen. 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 I just remembered the third name was Biggie Buechner. Sorry, Biggie, if you're watching. Let's go to page 114 for the Um, Who should help me dress the Torah scroll today? Christian. All right. And Nick will take over the prophets, or the reading of the prophets. (laughs) 
Translates, this is the Torah by which Moshe uh, set before the Israelites as God's word by Moshe's hand. Is a tree of life for those who hold on to it, and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant, and all its ways are peaceful. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise to you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses, your servant, and Israel, your people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Our reading today is a few selected verses out of the book of Joshua. We'll begin in chapter 3, <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Yehoshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, because tomorrow Adonai is going to work wonders among you. Then Yehoshua said to the Kohanim, Take the ark for the covenant and go on ahead of the people. They took the ark for the covenant and went ahead to the people. <clears throat> um, chapter 5, verse 2 is our next. It was at that time that Adonai said to Yehoshua, Make yourself knives of flint and circumcise the people of Israel again a second time. So Yehoshua made himself knives of flint and circumcised the people of Israel and gave a hot ha ralot, the hill of foreskins. The reason Yehoshua circumcised was that all the people who had left Egypt, who were males, all the fighting men, had died in the desert along the way after leaving Egypt. For although all the people who left Egypt had been circumcised, all those who had been born in the desert on the way as they went on from Egypt had not been circumcised. Because the people of Israel walked 40 years in the desert until the whole nation, that is, the fighting men who had left Egypt, had died out, because they had not heeded what Adonai said. Adonai had sworn that he would not allow them to see the land which Adonai swore to their ancestors that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their children to take their place. And it was these whom Yehoshua circumcised. Till then they had been uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised while traveling. When all the nation had been circumcised, every one of them, they stayed where they were in the camp until they had healed. Adonai said to Yehoshua, Today I have rolled off from you the stigma of Egypt. This is why the place has been called Gilgal, or the place of rolling, ever since. The people of Israel camped in Gilgal, and they observed Pesach on the fourteenth day of the month, there on the plains of Jericho. The day after Pesach, they ate what the land produced, matzah and roasted ears of grain that day. The following day, after they had eaten food produced in the land, the, the manna ended. From then on, the people of Israel no longer had manna. Instead, that year, they ate the produce of the land of Canaan. One day, when Yehoshua was there by Jericho, he raised his eyes and looked, and in front of him stood a man with his drawn sword in his hand. Yehoshua went over to him and asked him, Are you on our side, or, on you, or are you on the side of our enemies? No, he replied, but I am the commander of, the, um, of Adonai's army. I have come just now. Yehoshua fell down with his face to the ground and worshipped him, and then asked, What does my Lord have to say to his servant? The commander of Adonai's army answered Yehoshua, Take your sandals off your feet because the place where you are standing is holy. And Yehoshua did so. Jericho had completely barricaded his gates against the people of Israel. No one left and no one entered. Then our last part of Joshua is chapter 6, verse 27. So Adonai was with Yehoshua, and people heard about him throughout the land. Praise for you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it, and it is done, who speaks, and it is fulfilled. Our New Testament portion, excuse me, today is in the book of John, beginning in chapter 19. John 
John chapter 19, starting in verse 31. It was preparation day, and the Judeans did not want the bodies to remain on the stake on Shabbat, since it was an especially important Shabbat. So they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. The soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been put on a stake beside Yeshua, and then the legs of the other one. But when they got to Yeshua and saw that he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers stabbed his side with a spear, and at once blood and water flowed out. The man who saw it has testified about it, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, so you too can trust. For these things happened in order to fulfill the passage of the Tanakh. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Yosef of uh, Ramatayim, who was a Talmud of Yeshua, but a secret one out of fear of the Judeans, asked Pilate if he could have Yeshua's body. Pilate gave his consent, so Yosef came and took the body away. Also, Nacadmian, Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Yeshua by night, came with some seventy pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. They took Yeshua's body and wrapped it up in linen sheets with spices, in keeping with the Judean burial practice. In the vicinity of where he had been executed was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been buried. So because it was preparation day for the Judeans, and because the tomb was close by, that is where they buried Yeshua. And early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Miriam, Miriam from Magdala went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. Continuing on page 117. For all of God's words are words are truth and righteousness. For you are faithful, Adonai, our God, and your words are trustworthy. Not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled, for you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praise are you, Adonai, the God, who is dependable in all of your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's home. Save the humble so quickly in our day. Praise are you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai, our God, with Elijah the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your enemy. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you vowed to him by your holy name that his life would never be extinguished. Praised are you, Adonai, Shua, David. And for your Torah and for the worship, for the prophets, for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai, our God, for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor, for all of these, Adonai, our God, we thank you and praise you. May your name be praised perpetually forever. Praised are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat. And for your Torah and for the worship, for the prophets, for this Shabbat day, and for this festival of Matzot, that you gave us, Adonai, our God, for holiness and for rest, for joy and gladness, for glory and splendor. For all of these, Adonai, our God, we thank you and we praise you. May your name be praised by all that live, perpetually forever. Praised are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat and Israel and the festivals. Amen. Let's go to page 121. A prayer for our country. I'm going to encourage you to read it with. Our God and God of our ancestors, please accept with mercy our prayer for our land and its government. Teach your leaders to value your Torah. Help them to understand your rules of righteousness so that our land may never lack peace and tranquility, prosperity and freedom. God, as I have all the all flesh, send your spirit to all the inhabitants of our land and plant love and brotherhood, peace and friendship among all nationalities and faiths of all sin. Uproot from their hearts any hatred or enmity, jealousy or rivalry, to fulfill the yearnings of your children who God in his honor. They desire to be in light for all nations. May it be your will that our land will be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world, and that friendship and freedom will reign between them. That the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. What is that vision of the prophets? It's the day when the Messiah rules the earth, and there is truly peace, and the, plows, the swords are beaten into plowshares. Page 123, a prayer for the state of Israel. Our heavenly parent, Barak of Israel, and its redeemer, bless the state of Israel, first flower of our redemption. Shield it under your loving wings and spread over your suit of peace. Send your light and truth to its ministers, leaders, and advisors, and guide them rightly with your good advice. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land, and lead them God's deliverance. Crown their efforts with victory. Grant peace, land, and eternal happiness to the heavens, and let's say, Amen. Let's go to page 128. Take that from you. Thank you.
we're gonna have a tour processional. And what this is like is like the second half of the journey from Egypt where they followed the ark through the wilderness. We're gonna sing page 129, I'm sorry, 128. And then um, it means for the David on page 130. And then can I finish some English? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, Lou, it's on the top of Nike's Hodo of Emirates of Shamani, Kayar and Kerr in the Hobo, Talala Kol Hasidab, Lipne Israel, Mongrobo, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise God's name, for God's name is uniquely exalted. God's glory is above heaven and earth. God is exalted. God's people's might, giving praise to the pious ones, the people of Israel who are close to God. Hallelujah. Page one thirty. Adonai, oh, my Rabbi, call Adonai, but oh, call Adonai, Behadar, call Adonai, Shover Arazim, the Shover Adonai, and I say, oh, no, Bayarki Dehem, Kibo, Egel. Live on on this Syrian. Come over, come over, pray me. Call Adonai, Kosei, Hosei. Call Adonai, Ya, heal me, Baharak, heal Adonai, Midbar Kadesh. Call Adonai, Ya, Hala, Ya, Lo, Ba, Ya, Kaso. A Psalm of David, a tribute to Adonai, mighty one, a tribute to God, glory and strength, a tribute to Adonai, the glory of God's name. Bow before Adonai in the beauty of holiness. Adonai's voice is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Adonai is over the many waters. Adonai's voice sounds with power. Adonai's voice sounds with beauty. Adonai's voice breaks cedars. Adonai shatters the cedars of Lebanon. God makes them leap like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a wild ox. Adonai's voice carves out flames of fire. Adonai's voice makes the desert quake. Adonai makes the desert of Kadesh quake. Adonai's voice causes deer to give birth and strips the forest bare. In God's sanctuary, all speak of God's glory. Adonai sat enthroned at the flood. Adonai is enthroned as ruler forever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Page 134. When the ark rested, Moshe would say, Return on a night to the millions of Israel. Rise up on a night to your resting place in the temple, you and the ark of your strength. May your priests be clothed in righteousness and your faithful sing with joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. I am giving you good teaching. Do not leave my Torah. It is a tree of life for those who hold on to it. Those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant and all its ways are peaceful. For return to us on night, and we shall return from your days as in days of old. We're going to sing the Etz Chaim on page 134. It's about six lines from the top. And this just means it is a tree of life for those who hold on to it. And so those lines going down. Etz Chaim Hi, Lama Haksif and Baha. Betom Keha, Mehushar, Etz Kaim, He, Lama, Hapsik, and Baha, 
is a tree of life for those who hold on to it. Let's, let's go ahead and we can be seated. Thank you, my volunteers, for helping. Um, Janelle, would you like to get the announcements in? things now. Pesach is now behind us, and it was a fun night. I think everyone agrees, and um, <clears throat> I know quite a few people are watching us online right now because it was a late night, and that, that's okay. We'll see you next week. And Quentin said these magical words to me. Anyone who knows me, Pesach is a great holiday. I remember, I think it might be my husband's favorite holiday. Mine are the fall holidays coming up. Those are my favorite. And so Quentin, as we were leaving last night, he said, we're going to start preparing for fall holidays, especially Yom Kippur. And that's starting now. And so those are the big holidays coming up in the fall, which parallel the coming of our Lord as King, the Messianic reign. And I love everything that goes around it. And so you're going to see me up here talking a lot about it in the next months. So, what is going on? Security cameras, um, after the next board meeting, which will be in a week or two, we're going to have a good idea of what group we're going with, and then we're going to have security cameras installed. So I am looking at, this is April, I'm looking by May, we will be having those in place. We need to be in prayer. Juanita was one of the ones mentioned. So Robert is one of the people up front who speaks, and so Juanita's his wife, and she had a hip replacement. She had a knee replacement, and then a couple months later, she had a hip replacement. So we need to keep her in prayer. I want to just, I usually do this at the end. We have, since it's a small group today, I'm going to point out our visitors from last night. We have Justin, Camille, is that correct? Cecile. Cecile, oh, oh, I was so close, Cecile. I called you Cecilia yesterday too, so I'm sorry. And is it Michael? It's Michael. And Michael. <clears throat> and so I want to say welcome. And I gave you a calendar yesterday. And so this went with it. This is an insert that explains the calendar. Yes. And normally Kayla will be here. And we actually, for the servant section, we actually have childcare. And our childcare is not here right today. So today's kind of a down day, which is still a nice day. It's a great day for us because we actually get to know you, not so many people. So welcome for coming. And um, intro to Hebrew starts next Saturday. Let me give you an idea of what goes on a little bit. First of all, there's prayer here every single day. This is a house of prayer at 9 o'clock a.m. every day of the week. There is prayer. There are also teachings on the Torah cycle every Monday and Thursday given by Quentin. You can see those online or you can come here for those, either, either or. Um, Tuesday, we have the Women's Torah Club at 10 o'clock. And on Wednesday, we have for men and women, 515 Torah Club, Wednesday. That's not here, though. Is that going to be at, at your house from now on? Yes. Okay. That's good. If you're interested in that, it's going to be at Quentin and Inessa's home and just ask him where they live. On Fridays, we have a service here, a Kabbalat Shabbat service, 6 o'clock every Friday night. And on Saturday, we have services that begin at 9 a.m. And then, of course, you're here for the 11 o'clock. After service, we have an oneg, which is a time where we gather and we have snacks. Starting next week, there'll be an intro to Hebrew. Very basic class, learning the alphabet. Is it, Karen, is it all in one day, or are you splitting the alphabet up, or? I think we're gonna split it up. Okay. Go a little bit at a time. Okay, so it's not like they're gonna give you all the letters and expect you to know them. Okay. They're gonna go slowly through it. We'll be going through a book. Doing a section a week. Perfect. So that is Karen, and she is the teacher along. Well, Quentin will also be helping, right? Both of you together for basic Hebrew. And let's see what else. Um, 
I think that's it. And we have lots of other things coming up. I mentioned before that I'll be having a meeting with Quentin after Pesach and after I finish moving. Almost done moving. Um, we close in probably about a week and a half. I think we close in 10 days. And then after that, things will start becoming a little more normal. And visitors, one other visitor, Emmy and Christian from Texas are in visiting us. So that's a gift from our congregation to everyone who visits. And we want to say welcome. Um, I will specify one thing though. Right now, we only have one prayer meeting going on a day, and it's 12. Um, Jimmy and I show up, and it's, usually, it's at three least, it's him and I. Uh, but I do lead a prayer book uh, session every day at 9. Um, on Saturday, huh? The 9 o'clock? Yeah. Yes. But just be careful, it's in Hebrew mostly. Um, but 12 o'clock is completely. Um, I don't use the spirit, word spirit led because they both are, but it's it's a different tone. It's more conventional prayer meeting. Um, so anyone is welcome to come to either of those. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the teaching of your word. Lord, I pray that we are responsible explicators of your word, that we teach it in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much for everyone who's here today, Father. We're just praying that you reveal yourself to us during this Time. And I pray that every single person leaves here knowing you better. In your name, amen. Let's go to Joshua chapter 3. I'm totally sorry. I just went to uh, Nick's first uh, Joshua reading. I meant chapter 5. I looked at this um, Chapter 5. Let's talk about this because this is significant. And this pertains to our own times. I'm going to start in verse. Let's start in verse 1. When all the kings of the Emory on the west side of the Yarden, the Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanite near the sea saw how Hadanai had dried up the Yarden River ahead of the people of Israel until they had crossed over it, their hearts failed them. And they fell into depression because of the people of Israel. Truly, it is hopeless if you don't have the Lord. It was at that time that Adonai said to Joshua, Take for yourselves knives of flint and circumcise the people of Israel again a second time. So Joshua made himself knives of flint and circumcised the people of Israel at the hill of foreskins. The reason Yahushua circumcised was that all the people who had left Egypt were male, or I'm sorry, who were males, all the fighting men, had died in the desert along the way after leaving Egypt. For although the people who had left Egypt had been circumcised, all those who had been born in the desert on the way as they went out from Egypt had not been circumcised, because the people of Israel walked 40 years in the desert until the whole nation, that is, the fighting men who had left Egypt, had died out, because they had not Heeded what Anai said. All right, let's pay attention to this. There is a huge distinction between the generations in the Torah. The first generation is actually faithful to God until times get rough. The first generation, while they live in Egypt and are suffering under oppression, are actually faithful to God and they obey. But once they enter the desert, they become a people who are faithless. And they, the, perhaps their worst legacy in my book, it's not even the worship of the golden calf, it's not all complaining. That's just human to complain. God expected better from them. The worst part about their flagrant lack of care was they did not pass on the covenant sign that God had given them. They had seen so many miraculous signs. They'd seen the parting of the Red Sea, but they did not take it to heart. And they did not pass on that covenant to their children. And amazingly, their children were more faithful than they themselves. Keep in mind that circumcision is not the covenant. It is the sign of the covenant. They still have the covenant with God. But now it's time to reinforce the sign. Just like the Shabbat is the sign of the Mosaic Covenant. 
or just like the Holy Spirit is the sign of the um, of the of the New Testament covenant, as is baptism. Please be aware that they had the covenant with God, but the sign had not been passed on to them because their fathers didn't see fit to internalize the things of God. Why is this important? I believe that we, as a church, as a Messianic Jewish movement, or just a Sunday church, we as a Christian culture, or as a Messianic Jewish culture, have largely not passed on the things of God to those who come after us. And this is so important, and it's more subtle than you might think. But I want to talk to us about it today. You see, Scripture says you have 10,000 teachers, but you don't have many fathers. My charge to us is we need to be spiritual mothers and fathers who pass on everything that God has given to us. Everything that God has given to me is yours. That is the role of the spiritual father. Last night we had the Pesach meal. And there we must recount the Exodus story like it happened to us in the first person. I was a slave. I was freed. It's not 3,500 years ago our ancestors were slaves in Egypt. It's I was a slave, then I was freed. It happened to me. This is what God has done for me. How many of us here can say that God has done something for you in your own life? Let me ask you this. Have we passed it on? Have we shared? Have we told the story? Scripture says in Psalm 22, 22, I will declare your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praises. My desire is that everything God gives me, I give to others. So let's go on over to Exodus 12, 21. That was this week's Torah portion. Here, what we see is, I'll let you put there. Moshe begins at 21 by detailing the Passover process. And in verse 24, it says, You are to observe this law, you and your descendants, forever. What is the purpose of this? Why are we celebrating this festival? It's for the sake of the children. It's for the sake that what God has done will never be forgotten. How many of us know that God has done so much for his children through time, and I'm sorry to say it, it's been lost. It's been forgotten. Countless generations since the time of the Messiah have attested to the goodness of God. They have seen it in the first person, and it's been forgotten. And if you need evidence of that, let me just give a quick quiz of we're just going to break the Bible, the church forefathers, the history of the church, the Protestant forefathers, the pilgrims. How many of us would feel like we are experts in these subjects? I'm not really raising my hand. I'm, I'm just giving you an invitation to. Um, yeah. Neither am I. And I'm not saying that it's pivotal to salvation or anything like that, nor am I saying it's equal to Scripture. But what I'm saying here is that God has continued to work through our generations, and it builds faith to remember what he has done. So I love the festivals in the Bible, because all the festivals are geared at kids. And while they look back, they also look to the future. Last night during Pesach, we said, that this festival commemorates the first redemption, but it's also honoring the final redemption. All of the holidays work like that. On uh, In a few weeks, we'll have Shavuot. By the way, we should be counting the Omer. In a few weeks, we'll have Shavuot, Pentecost. Looking at the first mountain, but also looking at the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
that time when the Lord's presence and spirit will flood the earth as the waters cover the sea. Or we're looking at Yom Kippur, where we can look back at the redemption and the forgiveness, but also look at the future. Or during Sukkot, where we remember that we used to live in boots when we came out of Egypt, and that one day God's glory will dwell on the earth just as it did in the land of, um, and it will again happen. The Shekinah will again dwell on the earth. It existed for the children. It's much more than just saying, this is what happened. It is the visual, interactive experience. Let me not just tell you that we lived in booths. Let me actually build a booth and live in it for a week so that you can get this story into your heart. Just for the record, and anyone here can attest to it, I very often have two kids like running around me up here. Um, so it's so important to use that, by the way. But yeah, it exists for the sake of the children. We have a charge that the things of God should not be forgotten. We have a charge to be spiritual fathers and mothers in Zion. And that everything that God has done, let me share it with you. Let me tell you, give me a moment. What a travesty that anything God did should ever be forgotten. He whose word does not come back to him void. What about his actions? Let's all go on over to the book of Malachi, chapter 3. I want you to see something. I'm sorry, I say chapter 3. Um, it's chapter 4 in most English Bibles. Um, in other words, let's go to the last few verses. If you have a kind of standard English Bible, we're starting in chapter 4, verse 4. Um, if you do not, then uh, chapter 3, verse 22. Remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I enjoined on him at Horeb. Laws and rulings for all of Israel. This is the key word. Look, I will send to you Eliyahu, Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of Adonai. He will turn the hearts of the children to uh, the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with complete destruction. You see, what we're looking at here is a generational disconnect. A severing between the faith that is passed from father to son, and son to father. The love that should bind us is severed here. And Adonai is saying, return. Return. And I will send you Eliyahu, the prophet, to help encourage this and make sure this happens. What we see here is the heart, there is no heart for the sons and the fathers, and there is no heart uh, for the fathers and the sons. The relationship that should bind us in love is non-existent. And I'm going to give you my personal hermeneutics here. When John the Baptist was born, the angel Gabriel said he will come in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. What is he leaving out? The hearts of the sons to the fathers. My proposal to you, and I understand maybe this is reading into it a little far, that in the generation of John the Baptist, that the hearts of the sons did belong to the hearts of the fathers. I see it in their writings. They're complete, in, they were enamored with those who came before, and they recorded every little thing they wrote. But the fathers had disregard for the new ideas, the new things that God was trying. They were so busy preserving the old that God wanted to move in the present, and they were unable to receive it. You see, as we're passing down the things that God has given us and making sure they're not forgotten, we also have to be aware that he's moving in the present. And that very often, one generation who has seen God move in one way will have a different perspective than the generation that is now living with God or seeing God move in a different way. And while God never contradicts his word, the spirit is moving. And he does with some generations different things than he did with other generations. And 
while we must not forget where he's taking us, we must also remember where he's taking us in the present. And there has to be love and understanding between the generations. That there's a generation up here, there's a generation down here, God's done different things, and he's in the present, but he's also worked in the past, and we can't remember, or we can't forget, but at the same time, we must stay aware of what he's doing. We must be spiritual fathers, and part of being spiritual fathers is watching your children grow in the present. I don't have a child, I have a dog, but I don't have a child. But I know that one day, when I do have a child, my child won't be able to live in my shadow or constantly hearing my stories. He'll know some of them, but I say he, he, she. But the truth is, the truth is, they should live their own lives. They should have their own experiences. That's the point of being a parent. It's not to create a little clone of yourself. It's to create someone who is their own godly person who is going to serve the Lord in the present. Why am I saying this? I told you I've seen a lack of spiritual fathers in the congregations that I've grown up in. I can only name one congregation where I actually truly saw a spiritual father. Or spiritual fathers. That what the Lord has done for me, everything I have, everything he's given me, let it be yours. And that's why I try to bring it here. Everything he's given me, everything I've gone through, everything I've experienced, it's yours. You have a question, it's yours. Well, I'm not going to share with you out of a textbook. I'm going to share with you out of the Word of God. I'm going to share with you out of where the Spirit is moving and where He's taking me. That is the key word there is mentorship. I see a lack of mentors. How many of us have had a mentor? Ooh, all three of us. That's more than I expected, to tell you the truth. Um, a spiritual father, someone who's invested in you. See, from up here, you know, if Linda needs some special time or something, well, I can't do that. I'm busy. You know, got a little room. Um, you know, of course, if you want me afterward, that's 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 completely impossible. But a mentor takes a personal interest. In People, the Lord has taken a special interest in us as a father, and He wants us to take special interest in His body and pass on what He's done in us into others. Then. Salvation doesn't become addition, it becomes multiplication. Are we remembering the things that God's done for us in the past, or are we still looking forward to the future? Are the hearts of the fathers connected with the sons? Are the hearts of the sons connected with the fathers? I have seen congregations recently tear each other to pieces. Why? Because there was a disconnect between generations. And all, many of us saw what happened, so I'm just going to be very elusive about it. There was a generation of younger people who were starting to fall under certain convictions when they read the scripture. The pastor who saw, who had come from the 70s, said God doesn't work that way. And the congregation tore itself in half. And what happened is people who had been saved under this ministry left wounded, many of them walking from the Lord, and others who just said, we don't think we can get plugged into a spiritual body again. There was a severing. And unfortunately, there wasn't just a tear in the congregation. There was a tear down the middle of people's hearts. If only there was a heart, uh, hearts for the next generation. And what God is doing with the younger generation could be different than what he's doing with us. Than what he did with us 50 years ago. And at the same time, while we're moving into new territory that God is doing in the present, let's not forget where he's taking us. And I say this because I see among many of my friends, even the ones I went to college with, their religious expression is incredibly pro-Messiah, incredibly pro-Jesus, but it's very different from how it looked in the 70s. You know, 70s, there's a lot of, there's a large, there's something called the Jesus Movement, and I think it was actually the 80s, that just swept the nation, and it was, let's question everything, let's introduce new forms of worship, let's bring in the instruments, and a lot of my friends, they grew up in this world and they said, yeah, it's good. We want to go to something very traditional. And therefore, when I went to, like, say, the Methodist church, which was entirely run out of a hymnal, it was populated by people my age. 
And that's some of the good examples. There are negative examples of people, what I would perceive as negative, people going into Catholicism or Greek or Russian Orthodoxy, because they said, we grew up in this world where worship was a concert. Could we find something that is more reverent? Something that is more honoring to God as a king and takes itself very seriously. You see, I think that in a lot of ways, when we get stuck in our worship, it must look like it did in the 70s. It must look like it felt like we create, we do a disservice to those who come after us. And that's why I try to keep my message universal and eternal. We worship Jesus. What that looks like and what that sounds like is going to be different from place to place, congregation to congregation, time to time. Can we keep it scriptural? Can we keep it biblical? Can we keep it holy, loving, honoring, and what that's going to manifest as is going to be different from time to time, from place to place. But can we keep the core messages at the center as core messages? And I'm not saying this for my sake or for, to be diplomatic. I'm saying this for the present and for the future, for those who will come after us. That's why we have so much scripture reading here. It's because the message of scripture is eternal. And it's unquestionable theology. If you've got questions with it, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> of course, there's questions, but if you've got a problem with the errancy of Scripture, that's not Scripture's fault. That's not Scripture's fault. We're trying to keep the message eternal. We're trying to keep it essential. First things first, second things second. And that's why I'll say this. One of my favorite parts of the service is where we have Eli and Grayson he kicks his name, leading me around the room. And then we bring them up to the Torah scroll, we put candy on the Torah scroll, we ask them a few quick questions about Jesus and the Bible, and we give them candy. We're creating from an early age the connection between Scripture and this is pleasing. Can we teach them at a young age? The answer is yes. How young was I when I decided I went to serve the Lord? Three and a half. Yeah, it stuck. And I'll say this too, and this is not, this is, I don't know how to feel about this. Um, I often see where I feel like in churches, people are too young to, re to worship God. Like let's sit them in a little children's church, let's sit them in a daycare because they, they can't handle big people worship. Let's give them fun and movies. But when I look at other religions, like Islam, they don't have that mentality. From a young age, they are entrusted with the full weight of their religion. By, and it's the same thing in Judaism. You're expected to know Hebrew from a young age. You have to be able to read scripture in its original language at a young age. And what happens is, by the time you reach college, there are entire classrooms where every single person has the entirety of the Old Testament memorized in Hebrew. And we're content with veggie tales. Not ripping on veggie tales, but you get the idea. We have done a disservice to the generation by not taking them seriously. And I personally believe this is why many people who grew up in churches leave. Because there was a disconnect. They weren't part of the big body of believers. And then when they grew up, they had no place to really feel invested. Scripture is primarily concerned with that new generation, with preserving the things that God has done so that everything he has done will not be forgotten. Hey, Michael. Don't let the works of the Lord in your life be forgotten. My charge to you is find people beneath you, not beneath you, downstream from you, that you can share with. People who are going to receive everything that you've received from the Lord and take it and apply it to their own lives. And I always mention, I had a mentor named Ben Nider. That was mine. But I also look at other people upstream from me. Kim Smith. Um, I also drew a blank. Kayla Paul. Glenn Kennedy. Okay, people that I've absorbed knowledge from. Landon Meadow. And I absorb and I say, I'm going to take everything, I'm going to follow Christ as they follow Christ. I'm going to take something good. Everything that isn't helpful, okay, or maybe questionable, I'll, I'll throw that out. But I remember the good things that they told me. And I said, I won't let me forgotten. And I won't let 
what the words of my life be forgotten. Let me give it every single thing to those who are coming after me. Who is in your life who are you sharing with? I can give you one for certain right now. Whether we know it or not, we see both Michael right there. His parents are going to be sharing their walk with God for the better or for the worse, right? No matter what, into his life as he grows up. That's a responsibility. It's not to be taken casually. And so, another way I would say this is those who come downstream from us, it's not casual. It's serious. And God's going to look at it. Scripture says, not many of you should presume to be teachers because teachers will be judged more strictly. There are teachers who teach from the front, but then there's teachers who teach with their lives. The way you mentor, the way you share the things of God counts. And with that said, let me encourage you. This is the only way to live. It's the only way to increase faith. It's let's, let's not, not you're beneath me, let me lecture you. It's let's go by the hand. Let's go together to Jesus and see where he is in this situation. Father, I am praying for the people in this congregation, Lord, that we are disproportionately effective in sharing what you've done in our lives. Lord, you don't, Lord, you don't look at things the way people look at them. You look at the heart. Lord, I see potential here for spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers. And I, Lord, I pray that you bring increase, that you make us fruitful for your kingdom, and that nothing that you've done for us is forgotten, and that it is passed down to those who come after us. Lord, I'm praying for our spiritual children, I'm praying for those who come after us, that you empower them through those who come before. Father, keep us awake in the present so that we can see where you're moving now. While not forgetting where you brought us. All thanks to your glory, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's go to page 162. We'll sing the angel of Hanu in the little space. Atahu Ata 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 Ata